For those of you who are unaware, last night, early this morning, I posted a video and it makes a connection that I never thought we were going to be able to make. Last year, spring, I began sounding a warning about something that was happening in the DRC. There was a resurgence of giant air quotes here, the Ebola virus. Now, this was a very different version of the Ebola virus than we that than we knew of from 2014 or from Hollywood. This one had a long incubation period, 21 days. Meaning you could get it, not know you had it for 21 days. It also presented like the common cold. It wasn't nearly as destructive as quickly as I guess what you would call classic Ebola. Now, simultaneously, early last summer, there was this very strange event that happened in Fiji. A couple in Texas left for a honeymoon, flew through LAX, on to Australia, and then to Fiji. They arrived 22 May. Before Memorial Day, they were both perished. They went into now, they had reported feeling ill. The woman had reported feeling ill here in the States before leaving. They just didn't want to ruin their honeymoon. She thought she would be able to suck it up. Now, this rules out the big story that they tried to cook up about this. The story about weed killer, that they somehow came into contact with some kind of a poison that was used in... Fiji that wasn't regulated and the woman gave it to the guy and that's what killed them both. She was already feeling ill in Texas. And the parents confirmed this. One thing that we didn't make public was that Jennifer Fontaine, used to be Jennifer Veterans for Truth, actually was in direct contact with the family. She doesn't live very far away. She's in Louisiana. So we had a direct line to people that were actually involved in this. And they got, the family speaking of here, the runaround like no other. It took them forever to get the bodies back. One of the bodies has, was cremated against the will of the family. The CDC flew to Fiji to investigate this. And the nurse two security guards and a police officer started showing symptoms of what we now classically are referring to as COVID within 24 hours of seeing the woman. Now, these symptoms also mirror what was going on in the DRC. One of the strange things, one of the most inexplicable things about this uh, story out of the DRC was this. I was making the allegation that perhaps Ebola had gone airborne. And I showed a couple of peer-reviewed studies from the Public Library of Science that indicated this may be the case. Many people came and said, no, 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 no. The official story is you can only get Ebola by coming into direct contact with the fluids of someone who's died from it or has it. Okay, let's assume they're telling us the truth there. If that's the case, do you see this picture right here? This snow fencing? The distance between these two snow fences looks to be about six feet. This is what they were doing in the Congo. They were keeping people, healthy people, six feet away from people who were known to have this infection. Now, does that jive with having to come into direct contact with fluids? 
Or does this look like something they're talking about now? People talking about corpses that are so infectious that loved ones can't even be in the same room to say goodbye. We've seen that reported on the news. Nurses using their phones to FaceTime loved ones who are just a few rooms away. Because that's how infectious COVID-19 is. This is the exact same protocol. This is the reason channels like mine exist. When the statement comes out, 85% of the people who get it will self-resolve. But the rest could die within 10 days. Now, how does that make any sense to logic? That that could be the same virus? There's another piece of the puzzle. They are reporting a new symptom of coronavirus. Pink eye, conjunctivitis. That's also a symptom of Ebola. It's an indicator. So how many of these coincidences have to occur before people start saying, wait a minute, hold on. How can what they're saying be true when their actions reflect something completely different? What I'm showing you here on the right is actually the Ebola pandemic playlist. There are 52 videos that I did that you can watch that cover all of this from when it first started, everything they were saying, what they were doing, the situation in Fiji, a whole playlist you can watch where we talked about this. And it may be the only way that I have to communicate this because it's very clear that there is a physical human being person assigned to my channel to demonetize my videos. The AI clearly cannot do it well enough because I posted a video last night at roughly midnight, 1 a.m., talking about this exact same thing. It wasn't demonetized until 0900 Eastern Time this morning. Strange coincidence, huh? But, as I've stated before, as soon as the video gets demonetized, I'm going to put it in the members only area. What does that mean? Well, if you go to Florida Maquis homepage, you'll see a little button that says join. And for as little as a dollar a month, you can have access to any video. The psychological operations training videos, um, there are Antarctica videos in there that aren't um, public. We talk about all sorts of other things. It's the, basically the gloves off area of the Florida Maquis. And it's the only way I have to combat it. LAX, where they traveled through. They closed the concourse on 6 June. Now, remember the timeline from Fiji. 22 May, they arrived. By Memorial Day, they were both gone. 6 June, they report this quote-unquote power outage at LAX. But it was a very strange power outage. They closed the whole concourse, and they swept it, meaning they got everybody out of the concourse where this couple flew through and said it was just a security hiccup. Now that by itself, not smoking gun, but when you put everything together now, and you look at it in hindsight, I really don't know how anyone with a reasonable mind can look at this and go, well, yeah, that's just a coincidence. They're all three just completely unrelated to each other. They have nothing to do with each other, and you're just grasping at straws. I will give you the link 
where you can read from the nurse herself who treated the couple what she experienced, what she went through, and who else got symptoms. Cop, two security guards, and a nurse. The CDC thought it was serious enough to get on a jet and fly to Fiji. Tell me how that can possibly not be related. We also have Timothy Cunningham. We also have one other piece of information. And that's this. And it may or may not be related, but think about it critically. Last year, Merck was testing drones in the Bahamas to deliver medications. Now, I know that seems like that might be a stretch, but it just seems weird that Merck would have as a priority the ability to deliver medications without any human contact within the last six months. All of these videos that I did last year are all starting to make sense. It may not be Ebola specifically. It may not be SARS, MERS specifically. There may be aspects of all of it. But a lie of omission is still a lie. You don't have to have every I dotted and every T crossed to know when somebody is not telling you everything you need to know. And that's kind of where I'm at with this right now. Because there's no way you can jive the two things that two or three people, four people randomly pulled out of society, all healthy adults, no underlying conditions all get the same thing. And three of those people go to Walgreens and get some Zequel and get some acetaminophen and some cough drops. And within a week, they're recovering. But person four goes into a coma and dies. Really? Really. I'm going to keep looking into this, but... Something ain't making sense. Like, share, subscribe.